Hey, everybody. Hey, it's Shiloh with Glassweld. I am so happy to be with you today. I hope you and your families are all doing well all around the world and uh, able to, to start working again and making some money. Um, so today we wanted to bring you a full tutorial on doing a live windshield repair. So it's going to be an uncut windshield repair. I'm going to do it right on screen here. We're, we're streaming this live on both Facebook and YouTube. Um, so a couple of things we want to accomplish today. We want to show you the whole process. So if you're an existing technician, you know, I'll talk through some things that I like to do that maybe you can take away some pointers on. If you, if you are an existing technician, also, if you have any comments or questions or suggestions, throw them in. Um, we'd love to share your ideas or the questions that you have. And, and if I could tackle those as we go through this, this live repair, that'll be, that would be great as well. Now, if you're new to repair, this will also just be able to give you sort of a high level overview of how windshield repair works, uh, as well as an, an introduction to two new products that we have just launched. One that, that we call the shell, which is for UV blocking, and another multi-purpose tool. Um, and so we're going to show how to use those throughout the process as well. Um, and so we'll look forward to showing you th that through each step of the process. I may move the camera as we progress through the repair. So let's jump right into it. Thank you again for everybody for joining us. Again, I encourage your comments and questions and uh, let's get started. So, um, hey Lee, good to see you, man. So we're gonna jump over here and I've got a repair. I'm gonna kind of spin this around just a bit. And you can see this piece of lamy glass has got a decent number of repairs on it. So I'll get a little bit closer here and I might chop off my head in the process. But you know, we, we've got a little star break right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's probably about the size of, oh, maybe a little smaller than a quarter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a little pre-flexing. So I'm pr pressing a little bit on the repair you see it's got multiple legs radiating out in different directions. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight legs radiating off of this. A small cone right here. Um, and I know it's hard to, hard to tell on the resolution on a Facebook Live. But in, in any case, that's, that's what we've got. That's what we're working with there. I've already got my mirror set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove any, any debris in there. Now I'm going to show right off the bat here how to use one one of the one of the ways to use the new multi-purpose tool from Glassweld. Now, the the primary function of this may seem like a drill. For those of you who are Glassweld customers, you probably know we don't really encourage drilling because drilling really is not needed in most cases. Now, so if you're new to winter repair and you're looking at using Glassweld tools, we almost you know most of our customers start off at least doing almost almost never using a drill, but if, I do want to show you how to use it. So th this tool has three uses. I'm going to show you the first one right now. So since we are introducing a new tool, I'm just going to go ahead and drill and show you the use of the tool. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this guy on and hopefully you can see this here. It's got three speeds. So I can put it on low or high. If you're new to drilling, I would recommend you start on low or medium just because it gives you more control. So and then now if you if I'll put it on medium here. Now, what I like to do when I drill is I like to come in and come kind of from the side and just sort of clean out the pit first. And then, and then, you know, if I want to dig down into the repair at all or into the pit, then I can kind of work that out around the edges. Okay, so the reason, the reason that I do it that way is that if you drill directly into the repair, you know, from a perpendicular standpoint, you're going to end up with this like little tube looking thing, a little black speck that's never going to go away. I don't care what you do. Um, so if you do like to drill, if you prefer to drill to speed up your repairs or whatever, you know, just my suggestion, come in at an angle, kind of clean out the pit a little bit. If you go deeper into the repair, don't leave like one straight borehole through it. But, you know, if you go the deeper you go, the sort of the wider you have to go. So there's sort of a slow taper towards the base of where you end up. Obviously, you want to you don't want to hit the PVB. That's super important. But um, so if you use a drill to sort of follow that technique, work a little bit of a wider area, uh, sort of at an angle. And then as you get deeper, kind of kind of gr gradually taper the drilling space so that you get a more it'll, it'll make for a much better finished pit when you're done. So that's the first use of the new tool. Again, if you're if you're new to windshield repair or you're using glass hole tools, uh, you know, drilling a repair is really not necessary in almost in almost all cases. So we just kind of clean out the pit. I use a little brush just to make sure there's no loose glass debris that's stuck right in the pit. Okay, and we're ready to set up our bridge. So let me grab my bridge. Oh, we've got our tripod bridge here. Notice we're gonna set the tripod bridge, bridge right up over the repair. And we're just gonna press each suction cup down. One, two, three. 
You don't want to do this number like this with your hand because otherwise you can end up with one suction cup that doesn't fully adhere. So we're centered on the repair. I've got a little bit of lube so I can move the stand if I need to. Okay, great. And then I'm going to grab my zoom injector, probably by far the most popular windshield repair injector in the industry. I always check my vacuum before I start, and that's really easy to do. Just put your finger over it. Make sure you've got a good, strong vacuum. You want to make sure that your seals are working well. Now I'm going to choose my resin. On a repair like this on star breaks, I almost always, always use gray, almost always use all weather gray, which is a thinner viscosity. Now, the exception to that would be, you know, in the really, really hot climates, um, you know, or, or like in this time of year, if you're getting days that are 100 degrees plus, 90 degrees plus, I'm going to do four to six drops, five, six, and then pop my seal in. Um, then, then if you're working in really hot climates, you might want to go with the 2020 or the warm weather resin. And I'm just going to bring the, the resin up to the base of that seal. So just until it touches the bottom of the seal. And that'll keep the resin in so it won't fall out. And then those little teeth right on your zoom, they just line up with this ratchet paw. So you just click it right in. Boom, right up until I'm right on top of the repair. Oops, let me make sure I'm centered over it. And once I touch the glass, one click, and I get a perfect seal every time. So the, the zoom ratchet system is set up so that you don't crack windshields. That's the biggest, one of the most common things that happens when you're first learning how to repair is that you over tighten it, you over torque it by threading the injector just a little too tight, and then you cause a leg to spread. The zoom won't do that because of that ratchet system, that click-in system. So we're set up, ready to go. Um, just gonna pull a quick vacuum. All you do to pull your vacuum is thread it to the top until it stops right there. Let it sit for about 30 seconds or so. Now, while that's sitting there for a second, what I can do with this little tool is I can, if I press this button, I can swap out and spin the chuck on the top, right here on the top. I can swap out the collet and the uh, the drill bit right here. And then I can put in my post, polishing post, and the 332nd collet. A lot of you are already uh, setting these up so you have two drills, like one setup to drill. If you drill every repair, it's worth having two. If you very, very rarely do, what I would suggest is you set it up with your polishing post, and I'm going to show you two ways to use this little polishing post with a 33 30 second collet. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So now all we're going to do is just flip this around until we get to the point where the white seal swells. That'll mean the resin is starting to starting to starting to flow. Um, so I'll just take a quick peek, look at our repair. So resin starting to flow. I'll leave it another 30 seconds. Um, my personal two cents uh, when it comes to repairs, and I've done tens of thousands of repairs, um, is that if you if you make your first vacuum and injection cycle pretty quick and really focus in on making sure that the second um, vacuum and injection is a little more lengthy, two to three, maybe even four minutes in some cases, I think you'll get a better repair and just a quicker repair. So I just try to make the first the first vacuum, the first injection pretty quick. That, that's my, my take on it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just pull that second vacuum. Again, all the way to the top until it stops. One of the great things about the zoom is that it does so much of the work for you. You know, while I'm sitting here talking and setting up my secondary tools, it's removing air or injecting resin in a vacuum state or up into a vacuum state. So it's making the, the work pretty easy for me. I don't have to do a whole lot. Um, if, I, if I just leave it there for 15 minutes, most repairs will fill completely on their own with this technology. So, um, but I'm gonna show you some additional techniques there. Once this second vacuum step, step is set up, I have my little polishing uh, tool set up, my polishing and let's, we also call it sort of like a massaging tool. Now, a lot of you out there are probably do, repairing windshields right now in warm climates. And so I'm going to show you a couple of techniques you can use with this new tool to avoid probing or to limit the amount of probing. Now, when, I, when we talk about probing, we're talking about using one of these guys. So I'm going to go and inject resin and then I'll, I'll, I'll go into that. Um, again, just spin it down until the resin starts to flow. Swell the, swell the seal out a little bit, not too far. So the, there's a couple of options here. I can just leave it, let it sit for five minutes, you know, and it'll probably fill out completely on its own. Or if I want to move this repair along, I can use the Pro. Um, now, one really important thing that I have forgotten, and I want to introduce you to this new product because I'm just talking about the other products and I'm forgetting because I'm indoors, is this new shell from Glasswell. So it comes in a microfiber bag like so. Um, if you're working outdoors, you're not working in a shop setting, or even if you're working in the shade but outdoors, 
you'll want to use a UV blocker. And this is the latest technology in blocking UV. The purpose of this is that it, it blocks all the UV light that could prematurely cure that resin. Because if that resin starts to get, starts to coagulate, starts to thicken up, it's not gonna flow into these legs that I've gotten a star break. So what I really should have done, sorry, I was just talking and not thinking here, especially simulating working outdoors, is that as soon as I set up my injector, that I drop this right over the top. And let me show you how easy this is to use. So this goes right over the top of our repair, kind of line it up with the, the notches on the handle of your zoom. And then it just sits right there. Now you'll notice that I've got, I've got entry points on each side of this shell and it's gonna block all the UV light. There's no UV that can get through the top. There's no UV that can get through the sides and the angle is too steep for any UV to get through here. So our repair is completely protected. Um, Hey, Sean, good to see you. Zoom, zoom, buddy. So let me show you how you could use this. Now that we're injecting resin on the second one, we've got our probe here. Our probe can fit right through here. So you can, you can either lift it up or you can kind of come in at a, at a low angle like so. And you can probe those little legs. So without having to look under the flap of a UV blocker or look under a towel, you can, you, I can see completely through this repair or through the, through the shell see my repair that I'm working on while I'm working on it, while I'm flexing and block 100% of the UV. Also, this is a great conversation starter. When your customers see you using tools on this level, they're, they're gonna, well, they're gonna take you seriously. They're gonna be willing to take a, pay a higher price and they're gonna ask questions, which is a great thing because that's how you get reviews, right? Is having conversations with people. So I can also probe from this side and I can also probe from this side. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that on there now so you can see how we would do this through a real repair. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna come around the back side of this repair. And again, if I just leave this repair for five or 10 minutes, maybe not even that, uh, it'll fill up on its own. But I wanna show you how I can uh, fill this repair more quickly using this new multi-purpose tool. So now I'm gonna show you the second technique with this multi-purpose tool. So I'm gonna swing around here <clears throat> and I'm gonna remove my mirror. I'll just pop this off on the inside. So again, if you want to avoid using a probe altogether in the summertime to avoid those crackouts, this is one technique you can use. So take your little multi-purpose tool, turn it on maybe two, so it's on the second bar there, and come on the inside of your repair. And all I'm doing is just massaging the inside of the repair. Now specifically what I'm doing is I'm focusing on the little legs that aren't completely filled yet, and I'm just sort of working up and down the leg and encouraging, sort of nudging the re the resin along so that it can reach the end of that leg. And really all this is doing, it's not really creating any, any heat. It's just creating a small amount of vibration in a, a localized way that will help the resin to flow all the way to the end of that leg. So that leg is almost filled. Take a look. Looks like that one on the bottom is, is mostly filled. So now I'm gonna focus on the bottom one. And again, this is just a way to speed up your repairs. And, and a way to avoid using a probe. Now some of you, some of you use what's called a corking method, which is where you take a, a large cork and you massage from the inside of the repair. That technique also works pretty well, but it does, it does incur a little bit more heat and a little bit more pressure on the glass. So this technique is actually probably more effective, especially in the summertime, because there's not as much pressure applied to the glass and it's more controlled. So again, just that little second notch, I'm just gonna finish out this one little leg. Almost done. Okay, so if you guys have any questions on the technique here so far, let me know. You can speed it up to high too if you want to, but really most of the time you won't need it. Okay, that leg filled out from what I can tell. Yep, okay, all angles look good. All right, so I'm gonna swing back around this side. So that's the second, that's the second multi-use for this new tool. Um, drilling and then actually that little massaging technique, just using that on the inside of your repair to help 
cause those little legs to fill. So now I'm going to go ahead and move on into the curing section. I may go ahead and pop my mirror back on just to make give it a, a quick once over and make sure that my repair looks good. Now I can look through the right through the shell and see if I see any spots. I could even lift up the shell if I want to for a second. It looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and pop my shell off and I'm going to replace it with the Procure. Procure is going to go right over the top. And I'll position this back here a little bit so you guys can see a little more of what I'm doing. So then the Procure has this little USB port on the bottom, which just plugs into any little power pack. Like literally almost any of these will work. For the Procure, it kicks on, hit the button, and that'll start a 45 second cure, cure cycle. Meanwhile, while that's getting get curing, flash curing the entire break, uh, again, under resin pressure so that the resin doesn't shrink back. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up my next step. So as soon as we pull this off, um, I'm going to pull it off and I'm going to use one of these little film tabs and a little bit of pit filler. So I'll go ahead and get those ready while this is finishing curing. One of the cool things you, you can probably see here through this process is that like on our vacuum injection and curing cycles, you know, I could easily be setting up on a second repair. I could be doing a set of headlights. I could be doing a scratch removal. I could be doing a windshield replacement. So, you know, the nice thing about windshield repair is it really does, because it is so based on doing steps, uh, it really al allows you to kind of fold in your 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 work. Hey, Jason, good, thanks for joining us. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions as, as we kind of come to a close here on the live demo portion, please drop them in. Let me know if there's any techniques that you suggest or any things that you've run into that I haven't addressed in this video. And I'm going to show you in just a second once this is done, we'll do our, our pit filler and then we're going to show you the third use for the new multi-purpose tool. Um, also kind of while, that, while that's sitting there, you got your shell here. So your shell pops out right at the beginning. As soon as you set up your injector, you pop it on, you bring it off right before you cure and then just put it right back in the microfiber bag. That keeps it from keeps it in good shape. Tighten it up like so. Put it back in your kit, and you're ready to go for the next repair. Really unique technology. You know, nobody else on the industry has something like this that is so compact that blocks so much of the UV. I mean, it'll it'll sit out in the sun for a lengthy period of time in direct sun, um, and won't uh, allow for premature curing. So I think our curing is done here. So we'll go ahead and pop this off. Put it to the side. And let's see what I do. With, okay, so we're just going to reduce the amount of resin pressure slightly. Pull the piston back. All right, just kind of daub the center there. So now we've got just our little impact point where we where we drilled. Uh, again, we don't typically drill. That's really not necessary, but we wanted to show you the features of the new tool that you can drill if that's what you guys like to do. Drop a little film tab right over the surface with one little drop of resin. Put our curing light back on. We're going to do about a 30 second curing cycle. And, and then meanwhile, we just set up our injector for the next repair. Um, and then, so Kurt, ha Kurt has a good question. He says, once you cure under pressure, do you have to cure again? So the purpose of the curing under pressure is that the outer shell of the repair itself, especially on like big bullseyes or combo breaks, as the resin cures, it shrinks slightly, right? So we want to avoid that. So that's where the Procure comes in because it's flash curing that resin so that it, it prevents it from shrinking away from the outer shell. Um, now, once we do this final pit fill cure, what we're curing really is just the center of the brake where the injector was blocking the UV as well as the pit itself. So the entire outer shell is already cured. So now we're essentially curing that again, but simultaneously curing the center, if that makes sense. So it's sort of almost like a pre-cure. All right, so we're going to pop this off, and then we'll show you the last um, function of that new multi-purpose tool. Let me make sure I got it ready here. Okay, let's, so we're going to get our, our little little tool here ready to go, get our pit polish. All right, pop this over to the side. And then we just scrape this at a 90-degree angle. I'm sure you guys know that, right? You want to always scrape at a 90-degree angle. So you don't pop the pit out and so that you get a smooth surface for the wiper blades. Take just one little tiny drop of your pit filler or your pit polish, excuse me. You don't need much. And then you're going to put this on uh, probably two medium and then I'm going to go very flat. Now with this, one important thing is you don't want to go with the cork like this up on an edge because we don't want to round out that pit. 
We want it to be nice and flat, so I'm just going to go on medium, directly over it, you know, just moving slightly back and forth across it. So if you've ever polished a pit by hand, you know, you know, oftentimes you get to the end, you're like, man, that just doesn't look all that great. It's still kind of cloudy looking. This little tool, see, I just kind of let it dry out. Once it kind of completely dries out there, I'm good to go. Turn it off. And what this will do is it will leave your pit, I mean, almost the exact sheen of the glass. Now, I know on a, on a Facebook Live and YouTube video, it's hard to pick this up, but I'm going to show you this repair after we're completed here. So if I touch right there, um, that is a phenomenal looking repair. You can see I didn't do anything fancy. The, the, the tools did the bulk of the work for me. Um, and now I've got a, an amazing looking pit that I really can't even see unless I get right at the perfect angle because it is so shiny. It looks pretty much like the glass around it. So that's the third function of this new tool. Um, you know, number one, being able to do effective drilling if you choose to drill. If you're doing long cracks, you have to drill. Number two, being able to massage and help fill legs and tight legs, especially on big star breaks or big combos. And number three, being able to polish your pits to a sheen that is uh, basically like glass itself. So that guy's ready to go. I put, put, put my stuff back in my kit. Um, there are links within this video, this tutorial video, to purchase the new multi-purpose tool from Glassweld, as well as the new shell from Glassweld. So whether you're new to windshield repair, these two tools, uh, man, they're going to make your job so much easier. They're going to set you apart in the industry. And if you've been doing repairs for some time, you know we're always about looking for ways to make your job easier, um, to make it just easier to do what you do every day, uh, to make you know your perceived value to your customers greater and help you make more money. So hopefully that was helpful to you all. Um, look forward to seeing your questions that you might have as you drop them into the feed over time here so we can help answer any questions you might have. Hope everybody has a great week ahead and uh, you're out there able to make lots of money and, and feed your families and, um, and that you enjoy some of this nice summer weather we're, that we're getting. Thanks again for tuning in for a, a technical training series here at the Glasswold headquarters with Shiloh Spoo. I will sign off and uh, hope to talk to you all soon. Take care.